truth is in the mystery. Focus on the sting I feel from every pain and danger. Cause I can see the world. Holy Toledo, we are still here. <laughs> that is not properly upbeat music, pretzel. There we go. <laughs> ah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> there is nothing holy about Toledo. It is in Ohio, per capita, the largest producer of astronauts. What did they know? Wow! <laughs> well, I suppose we better get things started with a proper greeting. Good evening, everyone, live around the world. This is Arinia. Today is the 29th of March, 2022. It is day 900. Of the flight of the Phoenix, 900 since we, it is the 900th day that we've been on the air, and I'm just blown away that we're actually still here after all this time. I figured this experiment would have ended a long time ago, but hey, y'all seem to enjoy listening to me just ramble on about the randomest things, but, uh, but I guess... We better fly some actual rockets. So when we left off last time, which was yesterday, we had just managed to save the space program with the uh, downrange milestone and all of that jazz. And we now have access to the first artificial and first scientific satellite contracts. So, yeah, we, we, uh, I'm still blown away that it's been 900 days. That amazes me. We also have the new 60-ton launch pad, which we are going to make use of. We're actually going to do some, ah, I wasn't able to get to the other ones quick enough. So we need 115 ro units of sounding rocket payload to 270 kilometers. Okay. Now I'm going to build a much larger rocket than I usually have been. We've been building a lot of smaller things simply because we haven't needed the bigger rocket power. I also don't really care about the plane parts. I could, I could make use of the uh, procedural wings... because I might eventually figure out how to use those. But these plane parts, yeah, I don't fly planes. Oh, we actually just finished supersonic flight. I care, well, maybe about the air launch. The air launch might be useful, but, so, but we'll grab that. So I, I don't really care about the rest of it. Okay, so the next thing we need is this satellite era material science, which is 10 research. That will give us a bunch of Atlas parts, Titan parts. More powerful rocket parts. 
So what I want to do is I want to build a rocket in the 60 ton class, but I think I might need to do an upgrade to the vehicle assembly building. I'm not sure. I should have probably checked on that before clicking on the damn thing. Yeah. Just goes to show how scatterbrained I am sometimes. Okay, yeah, leave. I need to go back out to the space center view and check on if I need to upgrade the... Is that too loud? To the moon! The Henrark, welcome to the stream. Uh, actually, it would be to the M-double-O-N. We are in the real real solar system. This is Kerbal Realism. Uh, okay. Nickel assembly building 650 million. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. We are not doing that for a while yet. So, 60 ton launch pad. Yeah, t to the moon. Yeah, that moon. Are we, are we hodling? <laughs> no, I think uh, we're still in 1955. We're about 65 years too early for that. <laughs> okay, so if I switch over to launch pad B. Okay, it does give me some bigger options. Alright, so we definitely are going to start needing to use procedural avionics here. And I am going to set this up as a science core with uh, 2500 electric charge. Okay, that's probably going to have to change a little bit. Ah. Okay, I need structural. Actually, what I need are conventional structure fuel tanks. And I need smooth cone wasted at 800 mils. Alright, let's see. We need 2,500 electric charge. Don't really care about the extra tank volume. I guess that works. I'll go ahead and tool that avionics. Make that a little longer. So there's a lot that we actually have to sort of reconfigure here simply because of how big of a rocket we're trying to build. We're working in the 60 ton class instead of the 20 ton. So we need... what do we have in the way of science? We have an early film camera. What can I send up right now that I don't really... well that I might... Well, let me see here. Do I have any heat shields? No. Okay. Do I have air brakes yet? What part node do I get air brakes in? That'll come back to me. The decisions of a rocket designer, you know? Um, if I can put air brakes on, I might, question mark, be able to bring the rocket or the core piece back down. I might be able to put a biological sample on it. I imagine it's somewhere up here. No? Where is it? Where do I get air brakes? Oh, it is up here. So I do not have that yet, and I won't have it for a while. I won't have it more specifically for about 200 days, so pretty close, or 250 days, so pretty close to 1956. So, not sending up a biological sample right now. Probably a good idea. Because it would just incinerate. I haven't even read who's on the stream today. We have Gamester4, we have Billy is Slick, we have Rogue Girl, and the Henrark are all here. Account created six minutes ago. Henry! 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to just see how big of a rocket we can build here. I think that's entirely too small for what I need, but let me take a look at it. Oh, this is fair. Okay, let me... Needs high pressure tanks. How long will this burn for? make sure that we get the right fuel mixture. Wow, three? Well, that's... The problem is that'll burn for entirely too long. <laughs> okay, this needs to get out of my way. Oh my gosh, so much stuff! I also need to manage my experiments here. That's a fairly reasonable size. What I want to do... Oh, those are still experimental. Ah! What experiments can I put on this right now? Barometer, already done. Thermometer, already done. Mass spectrometer could be useful. And, well, that's it. Okay. <laughs> well, I can throw them on there, you know. Just to sort of make sure we have them, I guess. Unless if we can get to high space, I don't know. But we'll find out, <laughs> I guess. Okay, um, I need this to get out of my way. That is entirely too large. I go like this. Okay. I know, I mutter sputter. At least that means I can activate all the experiments from that one central part. Now. Where is. Where. There it is. I always look under procedural decoupler, but it's under decoupler procedural. Yes! I see this. Nah, there's not a node in there for me to mount it to, otherwise I'd use that. Now, what second stage do I want to run with? Do I want to run the Veronique? I see. Yeah, I know, that looks janky as all hell. 45 seconds. Or do I run the XLR-11? I think the Veronique is going to be... Or, that's the RD-100. Uh, yeah, the Veronique is going to be much more effective as a second stage. 
I could almost throw an Arab bee in here. Let me see something. What if I throw an Arab bee? No, the Veronique is still going to be more powerful and more efficient, so that's what we're going with. We're going with a cone shape, 600 to 1 meter, I guess works. Do I have, I do have attitude jets. What I think I might do here is build in some staged avionics control. I have to see. <clears throat> because it's, it's getting to the point where I can't really spin stabilize these stages much anymore simply because spin stabilization isn't working they're so large that they don't spin stabilize oh that needs high pressure tanks we also need to use the fancy tanks that we have That will Okay, there's that. How big is this stage? Two two tons. <clears throat> Probably two point two if we put in some avionics and a little bit of fuel. Where is my center of mass? It's right there. Okay, so we should, question mark, be able to put some avionics in this. Okay. Let's put in avionics procedural. Let's make it one meter. I still don't have better service module. Oh, that's huge. Alright, now we need RCS jets. Okay, now's the time where things start to get fun. It's not working. Yes. Well, my hope is that it'll actually work. Uh, oh, good God. Oh, 
Okay, well... <laughs> oh! Holy Toledo! Okay, we need to make a few adjustments here. Well, first thing, that can drop to 2.5. Why did it suddenly get longer? These are RCS. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, that's good. It's not much, but it'll hopefully allow me to do what I need to do. 0 0.08. 80 newt from all four of them. Hmm. Okay, so that should allow me to do what I need to. All right, that's the second stage built. Now, whoa, not what I wanted. Just needs to go back up because we're about to build the. Uh, okay. Um. Oops. <laughs> oh God! What happened? Okay, so that, okay, the avionics definitely need to be tooled, or else we're going to take forever and an eon to build this. Okay, tool the avionics. Well, those avionics, yes. These avionics need to be tooled even more, because holy crap. Yeah, look at that one tooling change gave us 106 day build time. Okay. Now, third stage. This is where it gets interesting. I'm not sure how well this is going. Her first stage, I should say. I'm not sure at all how well this is going to work. Now, I want to use the RD-100, because I can upgrade it to the RD-102. Not quite to the RD-103 yet, which is what I'd like to get to eventually, but the RD-102 does give us a fairly sizable burn time, and powerful thrust. Is this engine pressure fed? Is it? No. Where is my Kerbal Engineer? There it is. Okay, so there's that. What I want to do is I want to design a couple of these RD-200 stages as outboard engines. And they have vectoring, too, which is good. Does this RD series have... Ah! Damn it! Show me the thing. Thank you. Yes, it does. Okay. I hate this WASD editor camera. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it the next time I have to reload this game. I swear. Okay. I want is four outboards. Now 
Now, the RD200s will burn just about as long as the core stage. I really want to go to this LR43, um, but I'm still researching that yet. Hang on, I want to check out this engine, too. XLR43 and A1. Oh, that's lower thrust, less burn time. A little more efficient, though. So that's worth considering once we have some more upgraded tech. Kerosene, AK-20, and high test peroxide. The problem is that neither of these engines can ignite in midair, so we're going to have the whole thing firing at once. Also need uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sounding rocket payload. Prep. Okay. Ho oh, ho! We almost forgot the most important part. Alright, so this is my rocket. I need to... See, this is the problem I have with this damn... There we go. This is my rocket. It'll manage 8,000 meters per second of thrust. Or Delta V, rather. Okay. So we've graduated to building a more powerful sounding rocket. And I hope if we get this contract to pull off, we'll be able to... Oh, why are those steel tanks? Hang on. Oh, God. I forgot to... That's actually where the Delta V is the most right there. It means I need to move them down just a little bit more. So much that has to be tooled on this rocket. Now 
and I haven't even put the main avionics on yet. So it's 39 tons, so presumably we need an avionics pod that will control 40 tons. Two hundred and forty four days. Okay. Now we're going to go to the medium ground support clamps for the outer body. We'll use the small ones as extra support for the uh, outboards. We need a name for this rocket. Somebody give me a cool name for this launch. I love cool names. Cool names are awesome. We're going to take a minute and 30 second break. And when we get back, I want to see some cool names. We're back. Ask the internet for names. You're going to get Blanky McBlank face. Fine. Okay, I want to check into a thing really quick here. Oh, that's when I get the generic maneuvering thruster. Is uh, at early flight control. So I don't get that for a little bit here yet. Okay, when are these sounding rocket contracts due? 
547 days. All right. Oh, we also have basic rocketry coming in, so we're going to have some rocket upgrades. Yes. We'll have the LR-4389. And pretty soon we'll have air brakes, too. Today, it's going to be tomorrow, because <laughs> it is too dark. You guys might want to see the launch. Okay. From Launchpad B. October 17th, 1955, we launched Space Emix Space Face. <laughs> is it going to work? I don't know. We'll find out, because I have never tried to fire this many engines at the same time. Not in this save. Not in a while, actually. But I guess we will find out. While we're loading here, of course, if you're not already, make sure you're following. Check out the link I posted a little bit earlier, phoenixr.xyz. That is my website, and it has all my stuff. My YouTube channels, all three of them. Uh, my Twitch, which you're already on. Uh, my Discord community. My Twitter, which I, like, never use. Not sure why I tried to push the uh, maneuvering button. Don't really want to do that right now. Okay, I need to start all of these experiments. Temperature scan and mass spectrometer. Shrouded. You're... Those don't even work. Wonderful. Why are they listed as options, then? Damn it. Oh, well. Well, you know what? We're still going to do what we came here to do. We're going to fly a big rocket. If it blows up, it blows up. Here we go. Lift off. Oh, holy crap, that thing moves. <laughs> Okay, so what I have to do is I really need to be watching this thing from below. If one of those outboards starts to fail, I need to shut it and the opposite one off. I probably should have started binding some action groups. I will say is this thing gets a flippin' move on. We're already past Mach 2. There goes Mach 3. The outboards are about to cut off. Oh, it actually worked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy Christmas, look at this thing go. Jeez. the RCS to give us just that little bit of ullage. Oh 
Oh my god, this thing moves! I'm curious if we're gonna get high altitude science. We haven't done it yet. And here's the beautiful thing. I can use the RCS to spin things up. I might have needed some bigger RCS. This might be too heavy. Come on, stabilize, damn it! Yeah, this thing spins like a top. I don't think it's going to stabilize. Damn it, it's too heavy. The RCS is just too weak. Gotta try. Yeah, no. Damn. Okay, so solutions. Larger RCS, little less RCS fuel, because we really don't need that much. The good news is we are still getting some science and we completed our contracts. Okay. That, however, is bad news. So we are going to need to also fit an antenna to this spacecraft. So the good news is we have a working rocket, theoretically. <laughs> we just need to fine-tune it a little bit.
I mean, look at that thing haul, though. Jeez. Okay, I haven't done a read of the viewer list in a while. Gamester 4, Billy is Slick, Dinoterra, Ice Wizards, Kexips06, Rogue Girl, and the Henrark. Welcome to the stream. We have five viewers. This is the most viewers I've had for a stream in a long time. Of course, set some new altitude records as well. The payload. Jesus, 385 units. Ugh. I think what I'd like to do is run a pure altitude run. I just want to see how high we can fling this thing. larger RCS thrusters. Uh, the Henrark. A $10 tip. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for the tip, man. All to help fund the Mixed Space Face program. Well, thank you very much. Right, that's the first tip we've had in ages. Thank you so much, man. That, that really does help. Every little bit of support helps. Also need an antenna. We'll use the uh, eh. we will use the Communotron 16S. We will use only one of them because this should be all we need. I'm hoping this works. Okay, do I need to do some tooling again? Yes, I do. You are the top donor right now. 
uh, Henry. Thank you very much. Like, seriously. I... That lifts my spirits today. It has been a hectic day, and that really does lift my spirits a lot. Okay, we have mature supersonic flight. We also have basic rocketry. And I can afford some of these rocket parts, like the LR-43, the XLR-25. Okay, so I want that. I don't think... Well, I might want the Scud. It might be useful for something. Right now, though, I'm trying to save a lot of my funds. Simply because I do have to get a 150-ton class launch pad up. Right now, it looks like we're not going to have that up until, like, 1959. We are moving pretty slow in this save. But hey, I mean, we're having fun. We don't necessarily have to be the first into orbit. We just have to be the first to do awesome things. And right now, that is what we are doing. Let's see if we can do it again and do it well. Let's go! Five engines are good. Lift off! Oh, God. <laughs> so many telemetry analyses. Oh, probably from the other avionics cores. Jesus. This thing moves. This is a pure altitude run. Not quite a Karaliov cross. Fire up the RCS.
We might actually get fairly close to orbital speed. Let's spin it up. Here it goes. Three, two, one. Failed to ignite. <laughs> well, all right then. We pulled it all perfectly and it failed to start. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we have six viewers right now. Holy Christmas. And we're going to blow it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to take a 90 second break while I get this rebuilt. We know it works. We just have to get the damn engine to start. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a 90 second break. We'll be right back. All right, we are back in just perfect timing. I got that built out.
Okay. Space Enix Space Phase Mark III here. I was hoping to have this done already. We're in 1957 and we're still not even close to an... We don't even have an orbital class launch pad yet. So... <laughs> We are not going to beat the Russians into space, but we are going to continue to be awesome. Uh oh. Um, 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 um. We had two of them shut down early, hence that kind of. A little bit of a panic right there. Because of that, we're not going to make it as far on just the first two stages, but if we can get the third one to light... <laughs> if we can just get the damn third stage to light, we'll be in good shape. Hopefully. Please. It's a good thing we hadn't lifted off, or else we'd have just gone... We're still going to make pretty good progress out of the first stage. Not as much as I would have liked, but, you know, when you have a faulty launch like that, you really got to take what you can get. Gonna start to spin it up a little bit early. Come on. Here it comes. Three, two, one! Yes! <laughs> we got it! We got a three-stage vehicle! Now my uh, Delta V display is going just a little bit mad because it's also thinking about the uh, RCS on the uh, stage that we have now left well behind, so it is really confused, but this one is accurate.
I'm not sure we're going to get quite as far as I would like, simply because we had that other stage cut out too, or those two engines, but you know what? I'm calling this a success. What I can actually do is I can turn this into a one-stage vehicle, and it will fulfill my payload needs. See, look at that. We got out past 2,000 kilometers this time. Got another contract done. Still not a very strong signal on the way out. And that incinerated in a remarkable fireball. Yes! Yes! We did it! Yes! <laughs> All right. Now, we really need to get started on that 150 ton class launch pad. We need to do some contracts. Five hundred and ninety five units to two seventy, three sixty five to one forty. Four hundred twenty to three forty. Two eighty five to one eighty. Okay, so we have two contracts, 595 units of payload to 270 kilometers and 420 units of payload to 340 kilometers downrange. I'm pretty sure we can do both of those with one vehicle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my three-stage vehicle, the one that we've been using, into a two-stage vehicle. I'm going to take out the third stage and I'm going to use that extra mass as payload, sounding rocket payload, because that's what we're going to have to launch, is that sounding rocket payload is what's going to have to go up. And we're having the most trouble with that third stage engine, but I don't think it's necessary. Why is the music playing in here? I thought I had that turned off. Okay, so what we're going to do... So I'm going to reroute the rocket to that avionics core, which is going to be our main core now. I'm going to remove all of that. course oh god what happened things broke okay good we got the experiment we need now we need 595 units of sounding rocket payload so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a service module I'm gonna put another one on top of it because what that one's going to be is that's going to be our nose cone now. I like the wasted cones. It gives us the best aerodynamic profile. Let's tool the tank. Tank UI. Okay, sounding rocket payload. That gives us 153. We need 595. So we need another 450 or so. That'll do. 
Let's tool the tank. Tank UI. Sounding rocket payload. It's 593.3, so we need 1.8. And then the rest of this we will fill with the uh, IRFNA3, the fuel mixture for the Veronique engine. Why did its burn time suddenly get so much shorter? Oh, because we took off the cone. So we give it a little bit back there. Call this one Blasty McBoom face. Now hang on, don't I have an upgrade to the RD103 now? I do, but I don't want to use it. Simply because we have the experience with the RD102, we need to save the money. We need to save the money, because we need the money for what I'm about to do, which is purchase the level 3 launch pad, the one that gives us the launch launchers in the 150 ton uh, class, which will be our orbital vehicles. We need launch pad C, a level 3 launch pad. It will take more than two years to build, so we're not going to have an orbital vehicle until probably 1960. What I am going to do though is I'm going to purchase another upgrade, slap it into that. That'll speed things up quite significantly actually. I didn't even start building the damn thing. make sure uh-oh Now this electronics research for the satellite era is going to be very useful. I think that gives us new antennas and some other stuff too. Let me see here. What do we get? Uh, solar panels. No, we need satellite era science. No, what do we need? Lunar range communications. We also need to upgrade the tracking station, I feel like. Let's uh, go ahead and get some daylight here. Okay. And launch! <laughs> this is my three-stage vehicle being used as two stages. It's a little bit lighter, which means that we're going to get a lot more power out of that first set of engines, and especially out of the second stage, I think. Because the, the, the second stage 
is the second stage, the way it is now is about 500 kilograms or about 1200 or 1100 pounds. 2.2, 2, 1100 pounds lighter than the than the 2 3 combo that we used in the altitude runs. This is a payload rocket, not an altitude rocket. Big difference. See, it's a lot shorter. I just hope it still works. <laughs> Okay, so our goal is 270 kilometers altitude, 340 kilometers downrange. And I need our ascent stats for the downrange distance. Let's fire it up! Go! Five good engines, lift off! Now, this rocket will not need spin stabilization. It is fully controlled on both stages. Which is really good news for us, because that means we don't have to faff around with our angles. We can fly this in whatever trajectory is most efficient. Easy there, Tiger. Whoa. <laughs> We're getting... Oh, God. Ah, damn it. That was a concern I had. Problem is, the, the, with, with it flying so fast, it's very easy to just send this thing flopping out. Of, what I might do is enable fine controls. That might help me out a little bit. I'm not sure if that'll affect the SAS, though. So that's not something I expect. We might have to compensate for that with some uh, wings, aerodynamics. Okay, I'm going to hit my caps lock key because that'll trigger my fine controls. Night! Five in the green, let's go! Oh yeah, that's a lot easier. That's going to make sure that I'm not as likely to send this thing flipping out of control. Ah! Oh god! Ah, damn it! I did that one myself. I think what I need to do is I need to lock the gimbals on the... I need to lock the gimbals on the uh, outboards. They're really easy to make it flip out. Okay, so let's lock the gimbals on the outboards and see if that helps us out. lock the gimbals on the outboards. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to... Oh, God. No, 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 no. No, it's... Until we get to about Mach 2, we're really unstable in this configuration. Transonic velocity. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Just keep flying straight. No! No! Damn it! 
Just fly in a straight line, you bastard! Until we can detach the outboards. Just gentle. Okay, let's hold our course because we're about to stage. Staging. Okay, now we can worry a lot less about aerodynamics setting us flipping out of control. Actually, I'm going to go to the horizon here. I want to try something. How many ignitions does this have? It only has the one, I think. If I could fly a better trajectory with this damn rocket, it's so overpowered is the problem. Like, it's hilariously overpowered right now for the purpose I'm using it for. But that's because I built it not as a uh, orbit vehicle, but as an altitude test vehicle. We have not built an orbit class vehicle yet. So this thing is pretty close, and in its three-stage configuration, I imagine it'd get damn close. You can hear the RCS going silly buggers there. Okay, I haven't done a viewer read in a while. Gamester 4, Billy Slick, Dinoterra, Evaneo, or Evaneo, uh, Ice Wizards, Caxips06, Lana Ray, and Rogue Girl. Welcome to the stream. This could be a good vehicle for biological samples now that I have. Now that I have air brakes. Hmm. H M M M M. Actually, let me try something. Go retrograde. Go. No, no, that's not retrograde. Go. Oh, God. Yeah, we're going to blow up. Yep. <laughs> what was I thinking? So I have theories now. I have theories about what I can do here. Because I can, I can build, I'm pretty sure I can build an orbit class vehicle on a 150 ton class launch pad. I can just cluster larger stages. Can't upgrade this facility. So my communications are just shit until we get lunar range. The good news is that with the upgrades we're starting to be able to afford with our contracts here.
I think after this set of contracts, we're going to go for the biological sample and film return. Because I have a theory. I have a theory, and I hope it works. But we're going to do one more sounding rocket run, then probably take a three minute or a 90 second break while I make some design tweaks to the vehicle. So how much sounding rocket payload do we need? We need 615. Okay, so we can actually do that with uh, the tanking that we have. What I want to do is I think I want to replace the... I think I want to replace the sounding rocket payload and the nose cone. I'm going to replace them with a parachute and biological sample of film capsule. That might require some resizing. Yes, I know, the crew are retiring. Because it assigns me crew in 1951 when it knows I'm not going to have the technology to be able to go and do half of this stuff. So the crew are retiring. We're going to have to hire them, you know, eventually. Because they're going to retire in short order. Satellite era science is also going to be very, very useful. That will give us a lot of new experiments we can take up on these vehicles. So I might actually, what I might do, I might... Hmm, once this launch is done, I might just time warp to the satellite era science and do some reconfiguring. It all depends on how much money I have, how much the experiments cost, and things like that. Alright, what are our requirements? 390 downrange, 390 altitude. Both very easy. Five engines go, and lift off. high dynamic pressure once we get through that I'll start correcting oh god no 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 <laughs> it's max Q 
We can't throttle down through max Q like I'd like to. Okay, easy. Let's not overcorrect here. I'd like to get most of this into horizontal velocity. Oh, we need we have altitude requirements too. Shit. I forgot about that. Oh no. Damn it. Fuck. Well, that's less than ideal. Well, we got the downrange contract out of the way, which is good. Much rather get the downrange out of the way. Hmm. Problem is, I think this means I'm gonna need one more flight. Wow, the avionics survived? Well, that's... that's good... in a way. Because that means that my low... my flatter trajectory works. What I'm thinking I might do is strip out the outboards for the downrange vehicle and use wings, because I'm going to be using more powerful engines on the on the orbital vehicle. I'm going to be using the LR-43, I think. That'll probably be the best option, is the LR-43 for the first stage, and then the second, third stages will probably stay just as they are. It's amazing how big these decisions are if you think about them. Okay, let's see here. So I need... I'm going to need lunar range communications. I'm also going to need a lot of other things too. I don't need those yet. Primitive solar panels would be nice, but... Early avionics, also nice, but again... What do I need right now? I need material science, because that gives me... Balloon... Integral structure. Oh, integral structure. Okay. So that's a better fuel tank. That's actually more useful at this point. More expensive, but lighter. Okay, so I definitely want to get this material science upgrade. I do want the LR-43. But I can run some more launches for that.
Now this S2253, the Scud engine, might do well for the upgraded second stage orbit class vehicle, but I don't need it yet. How long does this contract last? Another 361 days. So, okay, okay, so I have plenty of time to get another rocket up. This is tricky, you guys. I'm making real decisions here, quote unquote, about where I want to go with this. Like, this is damned tricky. Um, we're going to take a quick 90 second break. We'll be right back. And we get a year three icon because KSP has frozen while it loads. <laughs> okay, come on. Work your magic. Tick, tick, tick. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. All right. Now, since this is an attitude, or attitude, fuck. Altitude. Let's try that one altitude program we can just go straight up straight down and boom. light on the engines boom So this one's fairly simple. The problem is that the extra flight really did cost us a lot of money. Like three million dollars might not seem like much but there's also the maintenance time
RCS is up. This Veronique engine has proven surprisingly reliable, you know. Like, it, it's, it, it's an incredible workhorse for how early of an engine it is. Oh, did I start the uh, mass spec? No, I didn't. You see, we actually have it burning well past its rated burn time. Does it care? It's a trooper! That fucking engine! Hi, kitty! My kitty has come inside. That's why I think I want to use that in my second in my second stage. Now, here's the conundrum. I think we can do this fairly easily, actually. I wanted the film return. Damn it! I wanted both of them. Watch and recover a biological capsule and 35 units of scientific equipment from over 100 kilometers. But I think this is going to be this is going to be a smaller scale test of my recovery vehicle before I start building larger versions of it. I think my cat is meowing at me. Let me go let her in.
Why am I still muted? Damn it! My microphone didn't unmute. So you guys heard me, you didn't hear me raging at the second stage not working correctly. Damn it! I hate it when that happens, because I can't always see when the thing mutes. Because it falls backwards and then it... Ugh. I really need a... A thing that attaches to my desk instead of this tripod here, but I gotta have money for that. Can't just get it with my own good looks. Okay, let's start the RCS. Okay, you couple. Come on, RC it. What? Come on! You have got to be kidding me! Why are we stable in that configuration? Okay, let me try something. Deploy the air brakes. Okay, we need to hurry up and fix this. Start the engine. Nope. What is it? Too heavy now? What's your problem? You've got to be kidding me. We are getting this done. Yes. Arm. Let me arm my fucking parachute, you stupid rocket! 
Oh, we're stable in that orientation. Okay. Now we're stabilizing in the correct orientation. Why? Do I need wings on the dam? I think I need wings on the second stage. I think that's what it is. I think I need wings on the second stage. Because I have these big-ass air brakes. You see, we're stable in this downward configuration now that we're moving down. We're at least going to save the rocket. We're not going to get anything out of this flight, but we're at least going to save the rocket. Which, in principle, demonstrates what I'm trying to do. Something exploded. Okay, so we're starting to filter out the other parachutes now. Actually, leave the air brakes deployed. We're going to take a 30 second break. Okay, that was mostly just to clear the ads there, so that way we're not getting them if anyone decides to show up in the last few minutes. <clears throat> I, I think adding wings to the bottom of the second stage will work. I hope. I hope against hope that that will work. That will allow it to be aerodynamically stable in the upward configuration. I just have to hope when we're coming back down that they don't cause it to flip out of control. I'm hoping that the air brakes will have enough resistance to hold us in this configuration on the way back in. Okay, we're actually going to balance on the engine, which is nice. Okay, so wings, fins on the second stage, hopefully, will make this happen. We just need to get up past 100, hopefully out of the atmosphere, and back down. Because that'll be the first time, well, no, it won't be the first time we've recovered a suborbital flight, but it'll be the first time in a while that we've recovered a suborbital flight. And that will also give us enough time to finish building launch pad C. Okay. We need to do it this time, though. We are starting to run low on money. Fortunately, though, we can take the contracts for the satellites. You know, and that'll give us a funds boost in the next episode, but I'd rather not run out of money. You know, 
because there's going to be a lot of work that we have to do. Fortunately, we already have the launch pad. All right, wings on the second stage. Or fins. Fins on the second stage. Okay. Just save it? Oh. So we now have the completion of launch pad C, which gives us a 150 ton class launch pad. But the thing is, we do need this one to learn. work. Look at our money. And we need to focus all the time that we're going to get from the satellite contracts on building the orbital rocket. Because it's going to take a lot of time to build. It's going to cost a lot of money. If I have a, if I have a powerful enough engine, I might have to make my orbital vehicle four stage. Okay, that is not correct. Come on. Make sure we start our science. Oh, this is good music for this too. Point four, point five. I wonder if the problem is that we're hitting Mach 1 right as the stage cuts out. Or in that really unstable regime around Mach 1. No, it looks like we're clearing Mach 1 fairly well. RCS, just so it's ready to go. Alright, here's the critical moment coming up on stage, Sep. Insufficient avionics. That's hopefully not going to be a problem. Come on, stabilize.
Come on, damn you. Yes! Come on, go, baby, go! <laughs> Fifty-six, fifty-eight, sixty kilometers. We've got to clear a hundred. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. There's a hundred. We're going to get just a little bit extra out of it. Probably about 113. Let's see what happens if I cut the RCS. Okay, now comes the tricky part. We need to stay in surface mode. I'm going to start arming these parachutes. Okay. Now. Arm the parachutes. It wasn't worth bringing the biological sample too. We didn't get high enough. We need to go into service retrograde. Use the RCS. Deploy the air brakes. All we have to do is land this son of a bitch. Come on. Okay, that's not actually a bad thing. It'll stabilize once the parachute's open. Because it actually bled off a lot of velocity, which is good news. I'm not surprised that it flipped around, but it flipped around late enough. There we go. See, once the drogue chute opened, it's going to stabilize in the correct configuration here. Let me go ahead and turn off the SAS. We got it! We're going to be bringing this son of a gun home. <laughs> yes! That's the way I want to end the stream. Because this will wrap up the stream. We'll have preparations for an orbital launch on Thursday. Real time, of course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing with this game sometimes. It gets your blood going. It does. It can. Wow. Okay.
You know, we need more upbeat music. Come on. Wait, what? Oh, all three sh Huh? Okay. That's weird. Come on. I think we can fold up the air brakes now. I said upbeat! Thank you! Music? I love how the main shoot is just through the drogue shoot. Like, that makes totally no sense whatsoever. But we're bringing it home. So you know what? I ain't even mad! <laughs> ah. And the main chutes open up! And I think this is as good a place to wrap it up as any. Thanks everyone so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, Please make sure to check out my website at phoenixara.xyz. That has my YouTube channels, this channel, my Discord, where you can find out about all my stuff going on. It has uh, all the ways you can support the channel through bits, cheers. We had a $10 tip earlier today. Patreon is great. Streamlabs has monthly tips. There are all sorts of ways you can support the Flight of the Phoenix. I'm really looking forward to the future of the channel once again, because it is great to be back in regular air, you know, because I'm at least getting streams out most days, or trying to. Now that I'm not saying I have to stream a specific thing on a certain day, I'm just going to stream whatever I damn well please. <laughs> and, you know, y'all seem to enjoy Kerbal, and that's what I'm enjoying right now, so that's what we're going to do. So, <laughs> Sorry, I'm really excited. But I think at this point we are going to go ahead and wrap up once this thing touch de touches down. So I'd like to also put out a special message. It is the 900th day since this creative journey started. And I'd like to thank all of you who have stuck by me for so long throughout this whole process through thick and thin when I almost gave up on it because of my because of my vertigo, because I was just disillusioned with the whole thing or whatever was causing it. But I'd like to thank all of you for standing by me as we as we reach 900 days on the air. And I'm looking forward to what we do in the next 900 days. Our next stream will be on Thursday and it will be our orbital flight, or at least hopefully our orbital flight and not things just exploding the whole damn time. But that will be for us to see in the one hour stream on Thursday. For now, because we're about to land from Phoenix Aura Studios. This is Arinia. Take care, everyone. <laughs>